This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 9.30, or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. Yet another wonderful experience this morning. We're messing around, getting the mics all set up and all the rest of it. Didn't notice, but Catherine came in. Turned my mic volume up. I just, uh, as soon as you hit that music, it was like, <laughs> that was loud. I bet you're up now. Yes. Oh, yeah, we're awake now. Everything's really good to go. Everything's magnificent. You know, it's just how it is. But So what's going on with you guys? Well, we are in the final hopefully final uh, day of just snow hell here. Yes. Oh, is so it still there's, snowing today? There's a literal snow Nami going on outside right now. Really? Yeah. And the thing is, yesterday was like very tame. Like the drive mm. in, I was like, this is much better than expected. We got this thing amped up and it was hyped up to be, you better get your snow plows out because you're going to be trucking through the, the bad stuff. And it was fine. It was good. Uh, and then, you know, late late this uh, late last night, early this morning, it st- starts coming down. It's kind of like a slushy rain, snow almost, and it's uh, it's heavy, Tom. It is really. It's yeah. heavy, so it's going to be through like three o'clock, four o'clock today. Oh it's gonna man, stink. it's going to stink. That's not good. So, how many? You got like eight and a half inches yesterday, and now there's more today. Yeah, this pro- I would assume that this will push the total up well past a foot. Yeah. <laughs> and it's almost April. Yeah. What a world. What a the, world. What a world. Happy spring. Yeah. <laughs> the silver lining is that like it's upper 30s, 40s the rest of the week. Mm-hmm. So like everything we're getting is going to be melting and flooding potentially yeah. like right well, away. Flooding. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. So I love flooding. But look at it this way. You're getting snow, but you weren't on a bridge in Baltimore. Did you see that video? I no. saw it this morning. It Holy was. Holy God. I think there's said there's seven people still missing that they're looking Ooh. for in the, in the water. I could not believe it because I sit down and they show this red circle. And in the middle of mm-hmm. a red circle, there's a ship and it's going under a bridge. Only the guy runs right into the tower and the entire bridge collapses. Yeah. Oh. Chris, Chris Eggert put a video of it up on his uh, Instagram, probably Facebook as well, but like a side view. So you can see the entire bridge as right. it's coming down. And right. it is, yeah, it's incredible. Unbelievable. So basically, well, I, I called him last night and I said, so this bridge falling, is that like a, uh, explaining your career, it's just collapsing. Is that what it is? You and the bridge. <laughs> you got to run it by him when he gets on, don't you think? Yeah. yeah the, I get memorial bridges. Yeah. What's collapsing more, a bridge in Baltimore or your career? Which one is it? I want to hear how that ham <laughs> segment went yesterday. <laughs> right. Yeah, the ham. How'd the ham go? That hard-hitting news. Right, about as well as the bridge, did yeah. <laughs> well, probably try. I don't know what to ha- – I think I figured it out, though, because I asked Catherine about this. Okay. Said, you don't like ham that's really salty. So some of it, I guess, they salt the piss out of or while they're – what do they do? They cure it? They cure ham? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I don't even know what the hell that means, but yeah, I mean, I'll have a ham Sammy, but it's not my go-to. There's no question about it. You guys ever been to a Sprouts? They don't have any Sprouts in Minnesota. It's a, it's a, it's like a grocery store, but it's very healthy food. Yeah. I would say it's similar to probably like a Whole Foods up here. Maybe. Okay. And even, yeah, right. even better actually. Better. Okay. okay. Yeah. It, it actually is. They have this honey nut chicken salad. Holy Christ. I got, I'm going to have to ship a bunch home. That's all I'm going to have. I am half to. <laughs> I thought you were going Honey Nut Cheerios. I was going to be like, we've got those here, Tom. <laughs> yeah, Honey Nut Chicken. <laughs> Maybe that's why I like it, because it tastes like Cheerios. I never yeah. thought of that. That's a possibility. It might taste like Cheerios, and that's why Tommy likes it so much. Uh, I'm just reminded, because I looked down at a headline while I'm talking to you guys, big news for bald guys. Toupees are cool now. Uh, about <laughs> 10 years ago. What? Mm-hmm. What? Oh, I, I don't think that's a sentence that I thought would never be uttered right. in the history of the English language. We, we got to save that that headline for Phil on Friday next yeah. time we talk. To him. Or he'll love it. Yeah, he'll Let absolutely him know. love yeah. it. But he always see. I, I wear a baseball cap, but I'm not bald. But a mm-hmm. lot of guys, a lot of guys who wear baseball caps all the time are bald. But my favorite experience. Uh, this is about 15 years ago, right? I I have to go in and see. Uh, the doctor about something, nothing serious or whatever, but there's a guy sitting in there in the waiting room. And it turns out 
this is like 15 years ago, and the guy at the time was about 90. So 85 years ago would have been, yeah, he played with Glenn Miller. So that would that would make sense. The Glenn Miller band was one of the great bands of all time. And he's telling me all about it and all the rest of it. And I'm looking at him, and his sideburns are gray. The hair around the sides of his head and the back of his head is black, and I mean really black. And then he's wearing on top of his head a red toupee. How'd you get to that combo? That's, yeah. It's toupee. I don't think I've ever seen a good toupee. <laughs> no, right? They're always either a little sideways or something's just a little off. Right. Like. <laughs> well, the great thing about what you're talking about, Tevin, is the, the, the toupee sitting on his head. So you go gray. You go dark black, and then you go red on top. But like, if this were the this were the wig, mm-hmm. there'd be like stuff hanging out both sides, like right here, and it'd be hanging out a little bit. Yeah, that's not. It's, great. it's a very weird look. There's no question. Hey, God bless him, man. The guy was a happy guy. He started playing his clarinet for me because he had a clarinet with him. So he, I got a guy with three different color hair playing a clarinet for me, which I thought was terrific. It was a wonderful day. Was was he good at playing the clarinet? Oh, he was really good. Oh, that's good. That makes up for it then. You could wear whatever color hair you want then. And he was about 90, so I mean, imagine how good he was back when he could breathe. I mean, think about that. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty old to be playing an instrument yeah. that requires a lot of uh, lung capacity. Yeah. I agree. You'll get no argument from me, no question. So, yeah, big news for bald guys. Toupees are cool now, unless, of course, he used to play with Glenn Miller. That would be the big difference and everything. Yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Because 15 years ago, so it's let's say it was 2010, mm-hmm. and he was 90, so he would have been born in 1920. So I suppose, yes, he would have been 25 years old when he played with the Glenn Miller Orchestra in World War II. That makes sense. I hope he had all his hair then, because I don't think Glenn would have let him get away with the tricolor. But, you know. <laughs> Just a nice, I get, when you walk into the barber shop, I'll take the Neapolitan. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Neapolitan hairstyle. It's, it's a wonderful thing. We do have to take a break here, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back in a couple of minutes. What's his name again? I keep forgetting. Crips, Crispin? What is it? No. Judd. Ju- ju- yeah, I'll say we're, that's Crispin? a segment too early. Crispin? Crispin. Oh, that's right, Crispin. Crispin that's right, it's Jude. Hey, Jude. That's who it is. We, you know he's named after my dog. Did you know that? I didn't. I that's... always was wanted to ask that, but I just assumed that that was happening. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he's going to be <laughs> delighted to find that out. <laughs> He'll be delighted to know he's named after a Cavalier King Charles who has a hell of an attitude. He will literally, at Catherine and I, are, she's lying on down on the couch. We got one of those, you know, corner couches where it goes mm-hmm. on two ways. Oh, yeah. So I, I sit on the right side, and she lays across the left side of the couch. And Jude will walk up and sit on the floor between us, staring at both of us with his head turning back and forth like, well, aren't you going to help me up on the couch? <laughs> what, you can't jump up here for cr- – I mean, literally. How lazy are – but it's that special attention thing. That's oh, yeah. what it is. Yep. Give me some attention. All right, we'll be right back in a couple of seconds. Judd is with us today, ladies and gentlemen. Mike Lindell and MyPillow employees want to thank my listeners for all of your continued support. And to thank you, they are having an overstock clearance and new product sale. It's going on right now. For the best prices ever, when you use promo code TOM, you get free shipping on your entire order. You get 50% off the MyPillow 2.0. You can also get 50% off the brand new flannel sheets that just arrived and won't last long. Six-pack towel sets for only $29.98. And take advantage of the free shipping on larger items such as mattresses, mattress toppers. They're 100% made in the USA, and they're on sale for as low as $99.99. Well, everything is on sale from the brand new kitchen towels. They have the same technology as the bath towels. They actually absorb, in other words, dog beds, blankets, couch pillows, and a lot more. So much more. To get the best specials ever, go to MyPillow.com or call 800-516-5146. Use promo code TOM, and you get free shipping on your entire order. So call 800-516-5146 or go to MyPillow.com and please do use promo code TOM. Is that text you're sending so important that you missed your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, Your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. 
If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. When you go to a restaurant, you do expect the chef to be an expert, right? You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work, which makes sense, of course. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Guy's a genius. Don't tell him I said this, but he's a genius at it. So, but don't tell him. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market, the economy. He knows how to plan for your retirement, too, which is great. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation 48-minute evaluation. you got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Here's what you need to do. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC, Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Now, all investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tommy B. is a paid endorser. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Liar. It is not. You're making it up as you go along. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the lovely and talented Judd Zolgad from Score North. Thank you very much. That's a nice in- introduction. I did not know that I was named after your dog, by the way. Judy. I'm going to say, time for sports with Judy. Arr! You know, I was, um, I, I've told you this before, but I was named... I was going to be named Jude until the Beatles song was very popular when I was born. And my mom thought, well, if I name him Jude, they're all going to think I named him after a Beatles song, which, by the way, in my opinion, would not be the end of the world. Uh, yes. But that's how it got switched to Judd. That's very funny because our dog's name is Jude because Alex and Catherine said we're going to be calling him over. Hey, Jude. So his name is Jude. Oh, I love that. Yeah, in fact, our dog is named Stella for the same reason. So I can lean out the door and say, (laughs) Stella! 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 One of the great movies of all time. So I like it, though. Hey, Jude, that's good. Or Judy, Jiu-Jitsu. I call them all kinds of different stuff. Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, dogs get, like, (laughs) like you don't call, you never call your dog by, like, the proper name. Right. I do the same thing. I come up with, aliases variations it's like oh, yeah. my dog is is on the run <laughs> yeah, changing his name there's every so day. many aliases i've created <laughs> for stella that it's like she's on the run it's like the feds are on her tail i love it though stella's a good name star of the house stella oh yeah and she, believe me i'm sure as you know with jude oh god the star of the house thing is um not far from the truth I mean, he, honest to God, will do something like if there's a blanket hanging a little bit off, like, you know, you just get home and you dry your face with a towel and you just kind of throw it on a, on the kitchen chair. He'll literally go up and go, like, put his hand, a paw on it, like, that doesn't belong here. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Okay, tough guy. Yeah. Oh, yeah, our <laughs> dog will sit there. If, if we're on the couch and she's on the floor and anybody has the audacity to have food, Oh, yeah. She oh. will come and paw at the couch, but yeah. not like in an aggressively. Right. It's more like, okay, you're going to include me, right, you idiots? Oh, food around dogs. Food around dogs is a huge mistake. Mm-hmm. And I don't care if they just ate an entire bowl of their own food. They still want yours, too. The only thing I don't get about my dog is this one, as opposed to my first dog, is picky. So you will try to. <laughs> so if you give her something, like, like for instance, our first dog loved bananas. Not a big surprise, right? Bananas, that'd be fine. This dog wants to try the banana, but always forgets she hates bananas, and then we'll just walk away in disgust. And spit it out. Yeah, but I mean, what's up with dogs? Since when don't dogs like everything you give them? I know, it's a a different world, there's no question. You met, well, you guys probably don't remember this, but I remember back when people used to feed their dogs by opening a can with, you know, the can opener deal. Mm -hmm. That stuff smelled so bad, I don't know what the hell, as soon as they opened it, you could be walking on the street past their house and go, oh, they're feeding their dog. Yep. 
That yep. stuff reeked, man. Oh, my God, did it stink. I have no idea what was in that stuff, but nope. you are right. So, speaking of stinking, do we have any good teams? Um, well, the Wolves are good. They have uh, <laughs> they haven't played in a couple days, but they are very they are very good. Other than that, let's see. The Wilds are going to miss the playoffs. The Vikings are trying to find a quarterback. Although I'm becoming more convinced that they will uh, trade up and draft one. And then you know I did some research today on your concerns before I joined you guys okay. on your concerns about the local nine. Okay. Okay. Because I've told you the whole time, you know, spring trading, spring trading season starts obviously tomorrow. Um, but I, but I will say this in your defense of your concern about this, this collection, uh, the Minnesota twins are eight and 19 in spring training. Oh, oh God. That 296 winning percentage is the worst of any, any of the 30 teams playing. Yep. And, um, here's the one thing I found interesting as sort of an aside, their run differential is easily the worst in baseball in spring yep. training at minus 47. Which means a lineup that's supposed to score some runs, and basically, I mean, they've been playing their regular players of late, isn't scoring runs. So, once you get past that, I'm predicting a World Series. I mean, three, you know, 12 to three, nine to seven, nine to five. Not, I mean, they're never, well, nine to five, they'd be more than halfway toward uh, winning. So, it, it hasn't even been that. We have to be nine to four. So, mm -hmm. they have been horrible in spring training, not just bad horrendous yeah they got shut out yesterday i think God. yeah they've they've been but i i thought you know what i'm gonna take a look i'm gonna del delve into as much as you can and uh, yeah it has been it's been a rough spring there's no question about i love my twins there's no question here's here's what i think if i'm sitting down in my chair and i'm going let's see i'm worth about three billion dollars I'm going to take a couple of hundred million of that and have the best team in baseball that never loses, man. I'm going to piss the – if I have to piss it away, I'll do it just to make sure that my team – which is kind of what Carl Polad did. Oh, for – well, yeah, kind in of. In a way, kind but of. But, I mean, in, yeah, but, I mean, there were years because of the Dome where he wouldn't oh, yeah. spend. Right. But, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm just saying – Hopefully, when they play the uh, when they play the Royals tomorrow, things can uh, turn around a little bit from how they've been this spring. So, is a one one fifteen game, one oh five game? What is it? Let me look. I believe it is one. I believe it is one oh five in Kansas City. And so they play three. Uh, what they play three in Kansas City. They play two in Milwaukee, and and then they open here against uh, Cleveland. There you go. So we shall. We shall see. Uh, let uh, tomorrow. No, I'm sorry. Three ten tomorrow. Three ten tomorrow. Okay. Yep. 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 Oh, th you know what? No, I'm I'm even wrong about that. Jeez, I thought they op open tomorrow. I'm getting old. Thursday three ten. Thursday. Yeah, they, that's what Saturday three ten. So they got the day off built in. Sunday one ten, and then they play a couple games um, in Milwaukee, which is not a bad thing because it's domed. Uh, right, right. And they can close the roof there. And then a week from Thursday, they play Cleveland at 310 in their opener. In the home opener. Um, are any of these games going to be on television? Yes, they all will be televised by Bally. So, so you can so so you can watch them. Now, if you if you were younger and were trying to stream them, mm -hmm. uh, then you are in trouble. But no. No, right. no. For That's our right purposes, here. Tom Bernard, we can watch them. Works for me because I have lit, yet to pick up. I've dialed, I've tuned in four or five times, and they say the game's going to be on, and then it never comes on. Really? Why would they say it's going to be on, and then it never? It's, we're, we're almost there. Oh, yeah, I've been watching this for 15 minutes, so I don't think you're almost there. i got to be honest. I don't know about that. Yeah, I don't know what the hell that's all about, because, but I, I got all the stuff. I got... You know, all the channels you need and all the rest of it, but it hasn't popped up on, it's not on the MLB network. It hasn't been on Bally Sports. It hasn't been I was on gonna any say, of that stuff. I don't think the MLB network would carry it, but Bally certainly should be. you think so, but. So what time's the game today? 310? Or that's Thursday. That's Thursday. Yep, okay. yep. So they, yep. Thursday. So they go uh, to Kansas City. They, I think they'll have a workout tomorrow then. Are you going to go to the game? Uh, nope. I'm not going to go to the one until they play Cleveland here. Why don't you go down to Kansas City and go by Arthur Bryant's and get Uncle Tommy some ribs and come back home? I'd be the happiest man ever. I have not been to Arthur Bryant's now, I bet you, in 15 years. It's been a long time. That, uh, that's a shame. Oh, I love that place. 
Yeah. I told you. Yeah, those ribs are okay, right? Mm. Yeah, just okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> those ribs are okay. <laughs> They're just okay. Well, I, tell, I think I told you. Well, I, I don't think I've told you this story, but it's absolutely true. And I felt like I, I was honored to join the club. I brought back my plate that had nothing but, but bones on it. There's no meat left. And as I hand it to the guy, he, the black man in America today, turns around and talks to another black man in America today and says, and I quote, but I'm going to shorten one word, I told you that Big N could eat. Wow. <laughs> I was like, wow. Well, thank you for including me in the club. I, I really appreciate that. Wow. <laughs> he was very proud of me. No, just a great guy. Uh, Kevin, you've been there, right? I have not. No, oh, there you not, not that particular place, no. Oh, you've never been to Arthur Bryant's? Nope. Uh, oh, other rib go. spots in the area, but not Arthur Bryant's. Gates is good, too. Gates Barbecue down in Kansas City is good, too. Good stuff. Now I want to have ribs for breakfast. Is that a good idea? It's it's not a bad idea. I was going to say, what's <laughs> like, define bad idea. God, it's, uh, ribs are just, oh, my God, they're good. But I tell you what, if they're made poorly, there's nothing worse yep. than ribs that are made poorly. Well, how about dry, you know? How about Ugh. if they're too dry? Then they're just yep. awful. But if they're good with You're the right, right sauce, oh, my God. Oh. Stop it. <laughs> Arthur Bryant's, baby, one of the great spots in America today. That's all I'm saying to you. Yeah, where, right. where, where does Gates rank compared it's to that? It's right Arthur behind Bryant's. it. I mean, it's very close. I'd say even... It might be even keel because they're different, but they're both really terrific. Mm-hmm. So maybe it's even. But but Arthur Bryan says that long, legendary history. That's one thing about working for Capitol Records and being on the road all the time. You would get calls from people, hey, Tommy, I saw on the docket today that you're going to Kansas City. You're going to, you know, Biloxi, Mississippi. You're going to, you got to go here, here, and here. And that was that was great traveling on, first of all, you're traveling on uh, Capitol Records dime, so it's not costing you anything. Right. Not a bad way to go, but I would get tips, and man, they knew their stuff. It was wonderful. Oh, that would be awesome. It is. And well, back in the day, Capital would have been. My guess is they didn't spare a lot of expenses. Back they in did the day not at Capital spare, Records. They spared no expenses. I'll be very, very honest with you. Uh, we had a guy. Yeah. His territory was just kind of southeast of mine. I think it was. And he was very tall and handsome, and he knew he was very handsome. Yep. So every guy that worked for Capitol Records, including the vice president of promotion, his name, uh, I don't know if I should say his last name or not, but everybody referred to him as Farrah Fawcett. (laughs) And he actually liked it. (laughs) Like, really? Yeah, I am as pretty as her. I really am. You're right. I look like Farrah Fawcett. Like, like, Well, actually, you don't look like Farrah Fawcett. (laughs) Right, right. Uh, Couldn't wonderful. do that now, probably, without getting in a bit of trouble. Probably not. I would guess, but yeah, that, uh, well, you know, people don't understand um, probably 70s, 80s for sure, but what the uh, expense tabs were like at like oh. media companies and Capitol yep. Records. And, you know, now it's like you can spend $25 a day, you know, and, and you have to prove, you have to submit receipts. Willing to bet Capital Records didn't really care if the receipts came in from Tommy or not. You are very correct about that. There's no question. And by the way, I began working for them, I believe, in 1977. I think it was 76 or 77. So think back. Well, you guys, are, the judge is kind of right in the middle, and you guys are too young. But the number one thing, uh, when, when somebody, particularly a woman, found out that I worked for Capital Records... What's the number one thing they always ask me, even though it was 1976? It's going to be something probably, about a, probably about a specific client. Was there who was the biggest name on Capitol Records back then? Well, they weren't together anymore. But everybody said, "Can you introduce me to the Beatles?" It's like, well, they haven't. I was going to ask six. if it was the Beatles. It was the Beatles, absolutely. Wow. <laughs> See, I thought it might have been by that point. I thought it might have been, you know, Barry Manilow or. The Bee Gees, or... There were some of the... Bob Seger was big. He was huge. Uh, Punch Andrews, his manager, as a matter of fact, he just came up in a conversation. I met a guy, and we're talking about... Punch was a great... He was a great guy. Just a really good manager. Bob Seger loved the guy. Those are... We should schmooze about that someday, because all the different things that went on, it just... 
I should have never quit that. Why did I quit that job? Because oh, I quit it to do voiceover, so I was traveling a lot to do voiceover. But I should have stayed at Capitol yeah. and put the airfare on their dime. It would have been much better. And you could have done that for years before they, they uh, said, hey, Tom, what, what's this uh, extra huh. extra round trip ticket or something like that? Huh. You're, you're right. So what, what was your what was the job there? Director of promotion. Okay. Oh, yeah. Which, which means director of bullshit is basically <laughs> what it means. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say that you were, you headlined one or two uh, pretty good cocktail parties back then. Oh, I will tell you, uh, Cliff Siegel, now Lauren Siegel, um, <laughs> he calls me and goes, are you coming to this party tonight or not? Down at the... Uh, the old, I think it's a share it now. It was a Sofitel back in the day. Sofitel Hotel. Oh, yeah. You come to the party tonight? I said, yeah, Cliff, I'll be there. Don't worry about it. I'll be there in a couple of minutes. He goes, what do you want to drink? I said, yeah, why don't you grab me some Heineken? I said, okay. So I get there about a half an hour later. I walk in. Hey, how you doing? Cliffy and Bo Siegel was there. It was wonderful. He said, uh, I, I put your beer in the bathroom. I said, why would you put my beer in the bathroom? I walk in there, the entire tub is full of Heineken. Oh, my God. And I mean, there must have been six, seven cases of beer in there. Maybe more. It's like, I don't know that I can drink like 75 beers, but thanks. Anyway, I really appreciate it. That's called not messing around. Oh, back in those days, man, with, a, with an expense account. And I'm telling I don't want to get too carried away here, but the, you know, I only got, you know, you got about a minute left or whatever, but literally you got a car for free, an air travel card for free, an unlimited expense account. It was like being a billionaire. It yep. really, it was. That's it was right. like, holy God. Yep. And I quit that job. That's how stupid I am. What I mean, a think job. about that. Why what would you job. quit that job? And at Capitol too, where, where, when, when you went to the, uh, primary place in in la it was the great capitol building right oh i love that building that's still there right yes sir with the record of uh, this is just fantastic okay we'll close with this because i know you gotta go yeah i'm on the eighth floor which is the head of promotion bruce wendell great guy hey tommy how you doing he's from philadelphia hey tommy how you doing i need you to do me a couple of favors all right i said yeah phil i get it i mean uh phil whatever <laughs> but in any case uh, I'm up there on the eighth floor and I'm talking to, talking to the vice president and the uh, director of sales and all that stuff. We're having a great time. And I look down and I see getting out of a limousine where the, uh, what are the name of those two sisters again? They sang together. They're very big in the seventies and eighties. Pointer know, sisters. Hart. Is it Hart? Oh, Hart. Yeah. Ann Wilson. and Dan Ann Wilson. Yeah. There you go. Ann Wilson. Yep. So, uh, and it was Ann the big one that I don't remember now. I don't either. Let's but say it was Ann though. She'll get over it. So I, I see Ann getting out of the car, and she's going to come up, and she's going to stop by promotion first. So she comes, stops by promotion, then she goes up and sees Don Zimmerman. And by the way, Don Zimmerman was one of the greatest guys ever born. I loved it. He was the chairman of the board of Capitol, just a great guy. So he's up there, and so she leaves, and Don comes down to promotion, and he goes, hey, you guys, that was a great uh, interview. I just wanted to come down because you guys are doing promotion. Uh, she made me a promise. She said she wants to get in better shape. She's going to lose about 35 pounds and I'm happy for her because she'll be much healthier. She'll have a lot more energy. That's really great news. And as he's talking, I'm looking out the window as her limousine is pulling into Burger King. (laughs) Well, (laughs) I'm starting right after this. (laughs) Yeah. I was going to say that's one last hurrah right there, but she did it. They were great by the way. The Wilson sisters. Oh, great, terrific. great voices. Yeah, no doubt about it. No, no question. All right, I kept you too long, sir. No, I that's apologize. okay. I will talk to you tomorrow, and then we'll talk about the Twins opener, not on Wednesday, but on Thursday. Works for me. Thank you, All sir. right, guys, talk to you later. Judd Zolgad, score north, ladies and gentlemen. Take a break. Be right back. Chris Eggert will be with us. I thought of, for some reason, well, we started yesterday about what quarter to 10, so maybe that's what I thought it was already. <laughs> Whatever it was. We started yesterday's <laughs> episode like 20 minutes ago. <laughs> That's about right. In addition to having the best selection in town, KNL Surplus and Ammo also can help you sell your firearms safely and worry-free. If you've inherited a collection of firearms from a loved one and don't know what to do with them, or if you have guns you're no longer using, all you have to do is call Jim at KNL Surplus and Ammo. 
Jim can help you sell those firearms, and by the way, safely through consignment and auction. I know Jim. He's extremely knowledgeable. He'll help you get top dollar. He's a great guy, too. He will help you explore all the options and take the work and stress off your shoulders. K&L Surplus and Ammo is on Lake Drive and Line of Lakes and open Tuesday through Saturday. You can also visit them online at www.klgunstore.com. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC in Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. Let's take a second to talk about my bank, North American Banking Company. You heard me talking about them for a long time now. Michael Bilski, of course. When they opened in 1998, they made a promise to deliver a better banking experience for their customers, where you know your banker and they know you. Well, a lot has changed since 1998. This commitment to being a true community bank in the Twin Cities has not. So if you're looking for a better banking experience, why not bank with my bankers at North American Banking Company? Go to nabankco.com or stop by any one of their six Twin Cities locations. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Chris Eggert with this Channel 5's Chris Eggert, brought to you by Mr. Money Talk, Josh Arnold. Call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation at 952-925-5608. Mr. Eggert, how's your ham? Uh, My ham is uh, real nice. Thanks for asking. Yeah, We were talking about this before the show started today, that we, we had a ham discussion yesterday and that you and I agree. And I, I thought about it more, Chris, and I think a lot of it has to do with how salty the ham is. Yeah. Because I'm not big on really salty food. If you had to pick a cut of pork that you would prefer, what would that be? It's no the Ribs, no question. It's not ribs? even close. Not even close. Love Do you them. like them dry rubbed? Do you like them like just soaked in sauce? They got any rub? I'm good. <laughs> That's all I'm I I don't know because I like them both. You're at, I am being serious. I like you know it could be steeped in sauce, could be dry rub, could be it's, and you get a little corn on the side. I'm telling you, forget about it. Tevin's shaking his head. I, I man, See? that sounds so good right now. I don't. This seems to be a recurring theme at this time of the morning. I could well, I could eat a whole days. giant plate of ribs right now easily. <laughs> I could destroy it. You know what's funny? Every time we talk about ribs, you know what appears in my head, and I don't know. Well, maybe it's his accent. Might be. Every time we talk about ribs, I hear in my head, now some of y'all never been down south too much. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this, what you understand what I'm talking about. Remember that poke salad, Annie, by Tony Joe White? No, I don't remember you that. Don't, oh, <laughs> you guys have to find that song. you got to play a little poke salad, Annie. For, it's one of the great southern rock songs ever ever written i'll have to look that up it sounds a little zz topish the way you were in a um, bit um yeah, in a the way, beginning of it. what what song is it where they're um uh ah uh, god that's gonna drive me crazy i'll think of it in like three hours what song i'm talking about from zz top but anyway in the beginning of the song he talks about his girlfriend and calls her a what was it a wretched spiteful straight razor tote woman <laughs> <laughs> yeah aj's got to find it it's one of the greatest songs ever written sounds like a nice gal it. yeah sounds like a very friendly woman there's no question about it. but he was from uh either mississippi or alabama i can't remember but really nice guy but he did have that accent he had to talk to him and he didn't open his mouth when he talked so you kind of had to pay attention to what he's talking about is, is this one never you is this one you got it talking? yeah i think so <sighs> yeah baby <clears throat> Some of y'all never been down south too much. I'm going to tell you a little bit about this so that you understand what I'm talking about. 
Down there we have a plant that grows out in the woods and the fields. Looks something like a turnip green. Everybody calls it poke salad. Poke salad. You snow a girl down there and she'd go out in the evenings and pick her milk. Oh, you're going to fade out the yeah. green oh. razor toad woman. Because that's about all they had to eat. They did all right. I'm down in Louisiana. Louisiana. That's good. Word. That'll go on too long. We'd have to pay for it if we played it any longer. Man, that that does make. I would love to be sitting in a barbecue right now. Oh. A barbecue joint, hearing that, swilling a nice gigantic beer. <laughs> you got it. That's Tony Joe White, one of the greats of all time. Just he had a couple of hits. He didn't have more. I think two or three hits, maybe something like that. But just the uh, and but again, you go backstage and it's already noisy as hell back there. Tony Joe, how you doing? Everything going really well, Tony. How are you doing? <laughs> okay. Catherine, what's up? Whiteout conditions in Watertown, Minnesota. Whiteout? So Andy's not going to be in today? Well, he's wondering if one of these guys could stay. <laughs> or, or we could we just could... fold up the tent. Oh, we can't fold up the tent. Well, we can see if she can come in tomorrow. I yeah, we can do that. Because you guys don't want to stick around and do that. If it's snowing that badly, I wouldn't think. There's don't make faces on here, Trill, look all cute. Did you see it? Oh, look how cute I am. Andy says he can only see like a hundred feet in front of him. <laughs> That's Where, where's Andy at, Wait, Catherine? People. Watertown. <laughs> Watertown? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this um the whole thing this morning oh, switched God. from rain to it switched from rain to snow and it just right over the area here. And it's the roads are way worse this morning than they were yesterday by far that's what i hear yeah so it doesn't sound like we're gonna have an afternoon show today or family show because mm. andy lives about 45 minutes out west so it'd be yeah it'd probably be impossible for him to get in here i gotta ask you guys a question since we got to go in about a minute or two here um i've never met your girlfriends or your wives but i'm assuming they're attractive women is that correct yeah yeah i'll speak for all three of us yep <laughs> like Catherine. Every time they're on camera, they do this. You see that face she was making? Like, stop making faces. She in the did camera. make a face. That was pretty she funny. She did. Oh, yeah, exactly. Oh, look how cute I am. Okay, yes, dear. Yes, dear. I remember the first time some of my friends, friends met her. I got there first and said, I thought your girlfriend was coming. I said, yeah, she's coming in a couple of minutes. Comes in. She sits down and everybody's like. And they would look at me like Tevin would be me. So they, they, they go, <laughs> they're looking at her, they look at me, it's like, shut up, prick. leave me alone. That's all I have to say. Any closing words, Mr. Eggert? Yeah, we're just watching that situation out in Baltimore, the bridge oh, collapsed this God, morning. God, Chris. I, that, by the, I mean, I would say, thankfully, it happened when it did in the middle of the night, and they're, they'll, the lost, we don't know, they've rescued two people so far. Um, we don't know how many people might be down there, but had that been like a rush hour thing or had it oh. been, you know, it, so, um, that's it. We're, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that all day, obviously. So that's, that's going to change here as we get more information on that. So, so you said seven people are still missing. Well, they think, they think they there think. were okay. seven people and I'm not exactly sure how they even calculated that to be honest, because we were watching the feed of the bridge prior to the ship hitting it and it's hard to calculate how many cars are actually on the bridge. Ooh. And there are also some city workers that were up there at the same time too, apparently doing some work. So not good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let me say goodbye. Goodbye, Chris. We'll talk goodbye, to you. Goodbye, Tommy. Goodbye. Nice Ooh. seeing you again. Oh God. <laughs> Bye, Thanks, guys. Chris. Have a good day. Channel 5 you too, sir. Channel 5 Chris Eggert brought to you by Mr. Money Talk. Josh Arnold, call Josh today for your free 48-minute evaluation, 952-925-5608. We'll take a break. Be right back. Roma Downey. I'm looking forward to this. Great interview. Should be coming up next, right after this. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota. Started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida. And now he can help you. 
If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612 791 Two three four five six one two seven nine one two three four five, and work with local professionals you can trust. Hi guys, it's Chris Eggert from Channel Five Morning News, along with my friends Megan Newquist and Ken Barlow. In the morning, we pride ourselves on sharing people's stories. I've been lucky enough to be part of this Five Eyewitness News Morning Team for more than a decade now. This is where I've raised my kids and working alongside my friends for all these years. We're like a family too. We are family, Chris, working with you and Ken and Hannah. It is such an honor to help folks start their day every morning on Channel 5. We get to catch people up on the news that's happening, and Hannah is here to keep an eye on the traffic around town. And when it comes to weather, I know people rely on me to plan their day and get their family out the door. Over the last 10 years, there are so many memories and so many laughs. I just love sharing the forecast alongside you guys. I feel the same way, Ken. To all you who start your day with us here on Channel 5, we think of you as family too. Thanks for turning on 5 Eyewitness News in the mornings. March means it's springtime, and that means spring cleaning and your carpets and air ducts are the first item on my list. Your carpet and ducts are your biggest air filters in your home, and you could be breathing in nasty dust, dander, and bacteria. Zero Res's platinum-rated cleaning systems and environmentally friendly ZR water to the rescue with these limited-time offers. Three rooms of carpet clean starting at just $129 off $40 savings, $75 off air duct cleaning, and 20% off all upholstery cleaning. Zero Res has over 17,000 reviews with an average 4.9 star rating. So their gotta love it guarantee ensures your spring cleaning will leave your home looking and smelling how it should. Call 952-Z-E-R-O-R-E-Z or visit ZeroResMinnesota.com to schedule your spring cleaning offer today and be sure to ask for the Tom Bernard special. Zero Res. Spell it forward or backward. It spells the same. Schedule your appointment today and beat the spring cleaning rush. You're listening to the Tom Bernard Podcast. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. You know, it does, it says on the, the sheet that she's supposed to be on at 845, but yep. on the one you sent me, it says nine o'clock. Yeah, I didn't erase the nine o'clock one. She's on the phone right now, AJ. Oh, she is. Okay, good. The ball squared away. Would you erase this thing so I know what the hell's going on? It's only That's about not the 50th it. day in a row. I'll, I'll erase that immediately. Yeah, good. It, yeah, a lot of good it'll do me after now. But yeah, could you could you straighten that out? And yep. I know it's really a bitch to cross out a nine and put an eight forty five in there. Yeah, it's apparently more difficult than. Uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently. Other than the fact that it's wrong every day, you know, I just wouldn't worry about that, that one. Yesterday, though, we're gonna have a guest on for two hours. Like what? By the way, she turned out to be a phenomenal guest. We should have her on sometime. She was a terrific guest yesterday. Had a really nice time talking to her and. So AJ schmoozing with Roma Downey right now. Is that the plan? Yeah, they're setting up, uh, setting things up. Are I'm just you... waiting for her to connect here and then oh, I'll okay. bring her on. Perfect. Forget it. It's too late. She's burned through two whole minutes. So they're out of the mix. That's all I have to say. Uh, Jerry Seinfeld's now a billionaire. You saw that yesterday? Yeah, we were talking about it a little bit. Where oh, that's right. I would have right. assumed that he was already a billionaire just because it seems like he's everywhere doing it. Yeah, your thing imaginable, but good for him. But I mean, he must have invested his money well because you don't come in like a billionaire just because you got a sitcom. No, and especially back then when it didn't pay probably as much as it would if it was on TV today. A lot of appearances, I suppose. Yeah, and he's always touring, so I guess that would yeah. help out. But it's not a billion dollars worth of comedy shows. I wouldn't think so. No question about it. Don Rickles would have been a billionaire, and he was never even close to a billionaire, but. Yeah, that's a whole different kettle of fish. I just, uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Oh, my God, this is not a friendly headline. That bully from school, they probably make more money than you do. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. The guy's a pain in the ass, and he's got more dough than the rest of us. That's really great news. 
Yeah. What did you think? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's not what you like to hear because you always think like that was always saying like, oh, you know, don't listen to your bullies because they'll you'll grow up and, you know, they'll be working for you one day. And so to hear the bullies doing all right doesn't make you feel too good. Uh, Yeah, I suppose that's probably true. You know, you might have been right. She might not be on nine o'clock. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) No, I I know she I we, we got the call. Um. I just was told, hold on. She's trying to connect, and I'm still waiting. So oh, can, maybe for another minute or two here. Interesting. <laughs> Not a problem. Does she out? Does she have to be out by a specific time? I will ask. Because it, it says 10 minutes, so I assume we've already burned through about four of that. So. Yeah, we should be able to hopefully get her extended a little bit. Right till mm-hmm. 9 o'clock. Because, yeah, it wasn't uh, from talking to Artie. It didn't sound like she had a hard, hard out. Magnificent. Well, like I said, she'd be a good guest. I hope she can make it on. But I think whenever there's weather like this, oh, I did find out by the way. There's a possibility. I don't know if it's going to happen, but mm-hmm. Alex might be coming in. And if she comes in, she can engineer the show, which would be great. And if she can't come in, you guys probably should get home anyway. Okay. If the weather's that bad, I yeah. mean, is it that? That's bad, huh? Yeah, it was trending that way on the drive-in. It, the one bad thing about here, we don't have windows to look out, so I'm sure that yeah. it's probably twice as bad as it was a few hours ago when we drove in yeah, and he said out west it's really bad out there so who yeah. knows you can only do what you can do and out that way because my mom lives in uh hutchinson just outside hutchinson and oh, so yeah. it's like all flat and just windy so i'm sure that snow out there is just whipping around my uncle used to live in hutchinson i loved him ladies and gentlemen please welcome our very special guest roma donnie how you doing roma you damn right tom I know exactly what you're saying. Nope. Hello? Nope. <laughs> I, I just talked to her. I, I, I know she's on the line. Roma? Is the phone line muted? No. Know. Okay, so I'll be Roma. Okay, you asked me a question. Uh, how was it to be on uh, Touched by an Angel? It was a very popular show back in the day. My mom loved that show. I hate angels. Never <laughs> cared for them. I tried to get them to change the title. It didn't work. What are you going to do? Right? Wait. Oh, wait a minute. Somebody's talking. Roma. Roma, Roma. Ding dong. Ding dong. Roma. Roma. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Nope. I don't know what the hell's going on. Oh, well, whatever. I I know it took a while for her to connect, so there might be a signal issue on her end. Yeah, but she's already burned through half her time. I know. (laughs) I like Roma Downey a lot, too. I really Mm -hmm. do like her a lot. She's rather, matter of fact, let me read about her. Even if she doesn't come on, then you'll know about it. Amazon Prime's videos, the Baxter series, uh, which will be available starting right now. Based on the worldwide best-selling book series by Karen Kingsbury, the Baxters is a riveting family drama that follows Elizabeth and John Baxter and their five adult children. Season one of the Baxters centers on Elizabeth and John's daughter, Carrie, could be Kari, but I think it's Carrie who learns the shocking truth that her professor husband, Tim, has been secretly having an affair with one of his college students. What kind of a slime ball is this guy? Am I right? Yeah, the way to live up to the (laughs) stereo. Was that a good or bad buzz? Well, Roma. Hello, hello. Hi, hello. You made it, Roma. Magnificent. Um, I I made it. I'm here. It all works we're out in the end. technology this morning, but we're here. Uh, where are you right now, Roma? I, mean, what's I am in Malibu, California. Oh, the reason I ask is because uh, in Minnesota, it has snowed, what now, about a foot and a half, something like that. Is that correct? Yeah, how about that? <laughs> a foot and a half, Roma. How'd you like that? Where are you from originally, by the way, Roma? I'm originally from Ireland. Oh, and uh, I've moved oh, halfway across the world. I've come from the land of the rain <laughs> to the land of the sunshine. Although, actually, we've had a lot of rain here in Los Angeles in the spring. And it's going to be so green and beautiful for Easter. That's what I've heard. I um, I could tell you my favorite Irish uh, or, or Ireland story if you got one minute. What do you think? Sure. Okay, I can't I can't say it the way the taxi driver did, but I went uh, we went to Ireland, then we went up to Northern Ireland, and hopped in a taxi. And as we're driving around, he goes, "I got to show you." I'm not even going to try to do an Irish accent, Roma, because it'll just make you angry. You'll go, "That's a terrible accent, Tom. Stop doing that." Right? 
I'll go for it. I, 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 I'll give you a lot of leeway on this one. Well, thank you, Roma. I appreciate it. So we're driving along. He goes, I got a couple of minutes from here. I got a, a statue I got to show you. It's a very, very special statue. I said, okay, sounds good. So we're driving along, and he goes, there, there's a statue. Look at it. I looked at it and go, that's yeah, a beautiful statue. He goes, no, no, that's not the point. There's a very special area you got to check out. I said, okay, what's that? And I won't say the words that he used. I'll say breasts. But he didn't use the word breasts, Roma. The driver says to me, Tom, you got to look between her breasts. Do you see the bullet hole? I'm like, what? <laughs> so my first experience in Northern Ireland was see that somebody shot a woman right between her breasts in a statue. What do you think? Goodness gracious. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't bad. Oh, <laughs> that that's all. wasn't bad. Uh, um, that's but I, yeah, I mean, the good news at least is that uh, we have a, a peace in the North now. So that's uh, yes. a blessing yes. that, uh, you know, that we've figured out how we can all get on together. It and a, um, yeah. because, you know, we belong to each other. And I, you know, and I'm committed to making projects and writing books and making movies and TV series that remind people of that. And this new show, The Baxters, really does that. It's a beautiful family drama and uh, told through the lens of people who believe, people who have faith. Um, they're not perfect people by any means. They, they have the same traumas and dramas and issues that the rest of us do. But it's just when the when the Baxters are brought by life to their knees, we we see them pray. And, um, you know, we don't often get to see those values reflected on TV shows. Yeah. And so I was so interested in this when I first read these books by Karen Kingsbury. She's a New York Times bestselling author. And she had millions and millions of these books in print. I couldn't put that first book down. It was such a page turner. And I didn't know Karen personally, but I was able to locate her number. I called her up. I said, listen, would you please, please entrust me with the rights to this book? It needs to become a TV series. It's great storytelling. And I'm grateful that she did entrust me. And we are now have a beautiful series, The Baxters, launching on Amazon's Prime Video. And I really think people are going to enjoy it. I don't think there's any question about that. It's it's kind of a little scary at the beginning here. Uh, one of the Baxters, uh, season one of the Baxter centers on Elizabeth and John's daughter, Carrie. Is it Carrie or Carrie? Yeah, Carrie. Carrie. Carrie, okay. I learned the shocking yeah. truth that her professor husband, Tim, is having, a, having an affair. Man. Yes. Yeah. yeah, it is. It's like, it's like you know, they, these are real challenges, real painful things that this family go through. But, you know, I feel that on some level, the uh, audiences are going to relate to the family because this is the mm -hmm. kind of stuff that happens in families, you know, and then we have to be there in support of each other. So the Baxters isn't going to shy away from, you know, the challenges that can show up in a family's life. I think it's just how they choose to deal with these things through the lens of people who believe in God is just a little bit different and unique, and I think is what makes it a very special show. It does play out like a soap opera. The episodes are short and very bingeable, but rather than call it a soap opera, we are calling it a hope opera, Ooh. and I just know that, that families everywhere will curl up on the couch together and just sort of binge through this hope opera together. I think it's a wonderful thing. You know, it's interesting about what, what you're talking about, Roma, because I have noticed I've, I've been doing interviews now for, God, over 50 years and all the rest of it. And I have noticed in the last mm, probably two to three months, people are referencing faith and God a lot more than they were. Is that because it seems that the world right now is really unsteady and everybody's angry? I, I, I've noticed that, quite, which is great. I think that's wonderful. Uh, if it calms everybody down. Do you think that's, that's part good. of it? Yes. Well, I would think maybe. I think it's the, uh, you know, we need we need hope. We need connectivity. We yep. need to be reminded of the goodness of God and the goodness of each other. We need to be kind to each other. You know, I think these things are important. But personally, you know, I've been in the faith space since my Touch by an Angel days, right? I mean, mm -hmm. and that's 
30 years ago. I've been interested in telling stories that uplift and inspire and uh, and have been doing them from from then, playing Monica on TV and then producing the Bible series with my husband, A.D., Son of God, Ben-Hur, you know, on and on. The list is long. Last year of the Easter season on Amazon Prime Video, I produced a wonderful movie called On the Wing in a Prayer that starred Dennis Quaid and Heather Graham. Ooh, if any right. of you uh, listeners saw that one. And uh, and so I'm thrilled that, that uh, Prime Video gave me the Easter spot again because my movie was a big hit last year. I think that this time of the year in particular, it is the season of hope. And um, and uh, people are looking to gather together as a family. This is a family show, The Baxters. You can watch it together with your, you know, grandma, with your kids. It's uh, There's something for everybody in it. And um, we had great fun making it. You know, it takes a village to do anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, I get to go out front and talk about it, but a lot of people brought their A-game to make this TV series very, very special. And uh, and I know that once people start binging it, you know, my hope is that they'll get on online and they'll start telling each other because this is how Touched by an Angel became a hit. It was a grassroots yeah. experience. People just started sharing. People went to church and said, have you seen Touched by an Angel? You need to watch that. And so that's what my hope for the Baxters is, that people start chatting and saying, have you guys seen the Baxters? Have you seen these important themes they're dealing with? Have you seen these? You know, gorgeous actors that are on there. The kids are all <laughs> yes. really spectacular. You know, it's a nice looking family, and they're, you know, and they're they're not always making good choices, but they always love each other. You know, and um, uh, they help each other through. And so, family is modeled well on the show. And at the center is John and Elizabeth. They have these five grown kids. I, you know, for a long time, I haven't been on TV. I've just been producing. But I stepped back in front of the camera to play Elizabeth Baxter. Ted McGinley, as I say, is playing uh, John Baxter. And we get to see in them and in their marriage, we get to see love and commitment and romance modeled well. You know, I mean, oftentimes we're watching shows where people hate each other and everybody's split up. It's nice to see a couple at the center of a show that are holding it together. Now, the the drama is sort of brought in by the issues of their kids, five grown people. You can be sure everybody has, you know, something that they're not doing right, something they need advice on. And this first season is dealing with an infidelity, and um, and everybody has an opinion on how the daughter should navigate that. It's um, But I, it's such good, you know, it starts with, in in our business, we have an adage that said, if it's not on the page, it's not on the stage. And this starts with this really strong storytelling. As I say, I couldn't put the book down. I believe people will binge the Baxters because it's, they just want to know what happens to these remarkable people. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. And I, and I do think, Roma, I love what you just talked about there, what you just said. I do think the world has to get back to believing No matter what it is, there's something more important than you are because so many people right now think they're the biggest thing that ever happened to the world. And we got to kind of get away from that, I think. Don't don't you believe that, Roma? Yeah, I do. Well, you know, I always think there's, you know, we have to make space for, you know, for God in our lives. It's it's, it's what gives our lives meaning. And, um, you know, and, and, you know, it's very important to me. It's, you know, as a believer, my life has been changed. Uh, but, you know, and I wanted to infuse this series with those themes. But it's, you know, but I but I hasten to add, it's not a preachy show. You know, that you, yeah, wouldn't, sure. you wouldn't have to believe to enjoy the drama. But I think for people who do believe, to see characters on the screen that reflect their values, to see characters on the screen who are not afraid to hold hands and pray for somebody... Mm-hmm. Um, is unique. We just don't get to see that, you know. And so um, I find it comforting because sometimes I watch TV, but I never really see anybody that looks like me or my family. <laughs> <You know? laughs> not, not anymore. Roma, I'm so you glad know? that it worked out. What yeah, yeah isn't it great? It's great. I know it's a season of hope and it's a show. It's a hope opera, but it's fun and bingy. So check it out. And when you do, 
please come find me on social media. I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook because I would love to hear what you all think of it. You know, back in the day, I used to get fan letters. Well, nobody's writing fan letters no, anymore. No. But you could jump on and leave a comment on on a post I make about the Baxters. I'd love to hear what you think of it. I hope you love it. It was made with love for you. Well, it's a wonderful thing to say. I will tell you one one bit of warning, though. It's not Easter this year. It happens to be my wife's birthday on Sunday, so it's apparently it's Catherine Day. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. I, I like I like the sound of your wife. Please wish her happy birthday from me. Well, and uh, uh, yes, and tell her she's got to watch the Baxters. I will tell her Roma Downey said to watch the Baxters. I'll close with this. My wife is five foot eleven and has very, very red hair, so she she's right in your wheelhouse. You'd like her. <laughs> wow, that's um, well. I'm I'm uh, have red hair, but I'm a, right. a lot than that. <laughs> uh, Roma, please come back. I love talking to you. Thank you for your time today. Thank you so much. Uh, happy Easter and happy birthday. <laughs> Thank you very much, Roma. Happy Easter. Ladies and gentlemen, Amazon Prime Video, the Baxter series, is available now, as a matter of fact. I've always liked Roma Downey. She's a very sweet person. Do you, have you guys noticed that yourselves, that, that there are a lot more references to having faith in something than there have been for the last several years? It's getting a little more prominent, I would say, for sure. Yeah, yeah. especially as it's kind of the world seems to be falling apart. you got <laughs> to respond to something. Exactly. And again, it's not all about, you know, you got to believe what I believe. It's just you have to understand, and I don't care if it's God or what it is, there are things in the world a hell of a lot more important than you. So get your head out of your ass and let's live together, shall we? Right? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Works for me. Uh, we'll be right back. I, You know, that's not going to be Josh Arnold. He's not the guy I'm going to follow, but, you know, we'll find out right after. When you go to a restaurant, you expect the chef to be an expert. You expect your auto mechanic to be an expert when it comes to fixing your car. You judge them both by the results of their work. Josh Arnold is an expert in investments and planning your financial future. Josh Arnold is my expert, and he should be yours, too. I talk to Josh every week, and he understands the market and the economy, and he knows how to plan for your retirement. Don't put it off another day. The man with your plan is Josh Arnold. Call Josh now for a no-obligation, 48-minute evaluation. You've got nothing to lose, and you'll have an expert planning and managing your financial future. Call Josh at 952-925-5608. That's 952-925-5608. Investment services offered by Josh Arnold Investment Consultant, LLC Security Investment Advisor. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. All investments involve risk. All comments and opinions are Josh Arnold's and do not constitute investment advice. Tom Bernard is a paid endorser. Is that text you're sending so important that you miss your turn? Is that text you're sending so important that you ran the red light? Is that text you're sending so important you didn't see the ball coming onto the road or the child that followed? Hi, I'm Mike Bryant from Bradshaw and Bryant. When you take your eyes off the road for even four seconds, your vehicle travels 100 yards. That's the entire length of a football field. If you absolutely have to text, you need to pull off the road somewhere safe and do it from there. Texting and driving is against the law and can cause serious injury or even death to you and others. Now that is important. We hope you're never injured in a collision, but if you are, please contact us. Find Bradshaw and Bryant, personal injury attorneys at minnesotapersonalinjury.com. Going farther with my Bryant on your side, seeking justice for the injured. Bradshaw and Bryant. Have you enjoyed Minnesota's non-winter this year? Want to enjoy the warmth whenever you want? Two Minnesotans can help you live that dream. Matt Carlson from Realty One Group Destination Key West grew up in Litchfield, Minnesota, started out helping his friends find homes locally and in Florida, and now he can help you. If you've considered living in the warmth of Florida, now is the time to reach out to your new friend in Realty, Matt Carlson. It's a buyer's market now, and your Minnesotan friend Matt can help you with a new home here or in the Florida Keys. And if you need some guidance with financing, Kristen Eklund from Coast to Coast Mortgage can help. Kristen is Matt's preferred lender, can finance anywhere in Florida, and like Matt is one of us, as she hails from the Sartell, Alexandria area. So if you're looking at a new home in Minnesota, or maybe that second home or retirement place in Florida, trust your new local friends, contact Matt and Kristen. Visit OneKeyWest.com. That's OneKeyWest.com, or call Matt at 612-791-2000. 
2345 612-791-2345 and work with local professionals you can trust. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. Listen live weekday mornings, 8 to 930 or anytime you like as a podcast on the Tom Bernard app at TomBernardShow.com or wherever you get your podcasts. You damn right. That's all I have to say. Is Josh ready to go? I'm ready to go. Josh Arnold joining us, ladies and gentlemen. What's the latest, Josh? The latest? The interest rates right now. The 10-year treasury has moved up a little bit to four and a quarter percent. The two the two year is sitting at four point six, but the 30 year has come down and mortgage rates following on that would also come down a little bit. That could be a positive for the for the housing in- industry as interest rates come down. We've got your friend uh, and and Florida resident, he of the uh, property down in Mar-a-Lago that a judge says is worth eighteen million dollars in a court case. But local, uh, but when he was running uh, and having trouble getting a bond. Uh, they all of a sudden said, oh, well, if you sell your property, you should be able to get $500 million and therefore have enough money for the bond. <laughs> what the? Well, that, that's a WTF on that one. Yes. Uh, but uh, we'll say the uh, presidential candidate from the Republican side uh, just scored a big a big number as his Trump media merged with, with digital world asset corporation, a, in a SPAC special purpose acquisition company merger that took place today. And the price uh, jumped uh, $20 a share from $50 a share closed yesterday to opening at $70 and change. There's only 37 million shares outstanding in (laughs) Trump media. uh, And the bulk of the shares are owned of Trump media are owned, of course, by DJT, which is the new market symbol. Now there are many here. The company is not making any money, has very low sales, but uh, gets a lot of publicity from from the media and gets uh, several mentions from financial commentators, including the mention that that I'm I'm giving giving it. Uh, this is not something that I would be wanting to put my money in primarily because the company makes no money mm-hmm. and the largest shareholder uh, could be selling at any, any time. Um, but even with this stock jumping today, this is still not the high that this stock uh, had as it, as it, when it first came public as a, Special Purpose Acquisition Corporation, a SPAC, uh, it was even higher than this just on the on the hype. Again, not something that I would run out to, mm-hmm. but it is going to get a lot of commentary uh, as it does add to uh, DJT's net worth. Uh, but Beyond that, anything I say could be taken in the political spectrum. And as my number two son likes to say, he is Switzerland. Standing in the middle. Politics. <laughs> he, he is Switzerland. No comments. We are neutral on this. 
That works. Well, two things I got to I got to bring up. Uh, 18 million for Mar-a-Lago. There's a lot right next, uh, right down the block from there. The lot, the empty lot, is for sale for 20 million dollars. So, oh, excuse I don't me, excuse me, 200 is, million dollars, not 20 okay, million. I don't think the empty empty lot that's uh, down the street from Mar-a-Lago has as much acreage no. as Mar- Mar-a-Lago. No, it does not. But yes, yeah, 200 I do not million. Also, and I also do not think that the lot. Uh, down down the street uh, from Mar-a-Lago has the, we'll call it, architectural and or historical significance right. no of, question. of no. that particular property. Now, what about Truth Social? Somebody told me he sold half of Truth Social for like $3.3 billion. Well, Truth, Truth Social is a part of Trump media. Right. So I don't think he, he sold anything. I think this is just part of the merger uh, with... Um, digital world, I uh, see. Um, okay, world which became uh, Trump Media. So that's that's the selling. You have a in a special purpose acquisition corporation goes out as a, a blank check company. They go out and they raise X amount of money, and they have uh, two years to find a company to merge with. If they don't find a company to merge with, they return uh, investors' uh, capital. Okay. So this this is a planned merger for for several years, and it's now come come to fruition. I'm not sure of the timing of this, which is uh, kind of odd given all the circumstances and circus. Uh, around uh, around DJT, but there are also some other companies that have recently filed and gone public, again, with little or no income, but a lot of hype. And there are people saying, oh, uh, DJT, another company called Reddit, RDDT. Right, right. Um, also, a company with some revenue, but uh, no income, and also not a lot of shares outstanding, uh-huh. are two of the new Mimi stocks or MEM stocks, adding to the old list of a close to bankrupt company, GameStop, uh, which several years ago generated and still generates a little bit of of height. I prefer uh, investing in companies, and I say investing in companies as opposed to uh, trading, which is a different story. Companies that do make a little bit of money and have some, we'll say, significant uh, growth potential with the largest holding uh, favorite Apple, which is suffering through a lot of noise. And I say a lot of noise. We have the Europeans. Uh, the U- European Commission has passed their new Digital Marketing Act, which affects platforms in Europe. And Apple is considered a platform, as is Google, Microsoft, Amazon, Meta, which owns Facebook and Instagram and Reels, and ByteDance. Uh, you might be familiar with ByteDance because they China. own TikTok. Yep. And I know that you're always on TikTok watching fat men dancing in bikinis. Yeah, there's no question about it. I wouldn't even know how to find TikTok. That shows you. I have no interest <laughs> whatsoever. Josh, another yeah, brilliant thank report. That's all I have to say thank to you. Sir. Thank you very much. All right, we'll see you on Friday uh, morning, correct? Correct, correct. You'll see me uh, in my usual spot atop the uh, the bike. Oh, you're uh, not coming please. in again, you lazy bum. Why'd you stop coming in? <laughs> you're not there. Oh, I see. Okay. I can't, I can't give you a hug and a kiss. <laughs> well, thank you. I look forward to it in just a few weeks. All right, Pally. Okay. I will talk to you Thanks. soon. Thanks. Bye. Bye. 
I'd rather get a hug and a kiss from his mother and not him. But, you know, it's just the way it is. I love his mother. She's a very, very good woman. Speaking of great women, we'll be. What are you guys laughing about? Just because you threw that at me. Oh, I can't give no, you a hug and a kiss. That's just not what I expected that call to end like. That's <laughs> No, you don't hear that a lot between two you men. You bum. On. Right. <laughs> you bum. He's like, you're not even here. <laughs> we'll be right back. Kristen Burt will join us right after this. Hello, I'm Brad Huckle, President and Chief Lending Officer at North American Banking Company. And I'm Michael Bilski, CEO at North American Banking Company. As a locally owned and operated community bank, we work with many multi-generational businesses. Take personal care dentistry of Roseville, for example. Dr. Walter Hunt, also known as Painless to me, has been a longtime customer of the bank since we opened the bank in 1998. When his son Kyle was ready to join the practice, they wanted to expand quickly. With their additional space and equipment, they now are able to see more patients each day while providing the same level of care and service. Okay, guys, I'll take it from here. If you run a family business or any kind of business for that matter, you should be banking with Brad and Mike over at North American Banking Company. Every time I deal with them or their team, I know I'm working with experienced professional bankers. So why not bank with my banker? North American Banking Company, a better banking experience, member FDIC, equal housing lender. The past several years have been the craziest in the history of the car business. The pandemic, supply chain and chip issues, all causing extreme inventory shortages that led to, well, predatory pricing. Some dealers charge thousands of dollars over MSRP. We never played that game. I'm Jim Paul of Alley Buick GMC. We knew that would leave a bad taste in a customer's mouth. More importantly, from an integrity standpoint, it was just wrong. So what about the current market? You know, inventory and pricing. Valley has their best inventory in years. Really, all the Buick and GMC models. Even the previously hard-to-find Yukons, HD pickups, and Hummer EVs. Plenty of deep discounts. Many with factory rebates and low-interest financing. Then it's a good time to buy? It's a great time. We're welcoming our previous customers back, as well as anyone else that felt the treatment just didn't feel right the last time somewhere else. Valley Buick GMC and Apple Valley and Hastings or valleycardealers.com. Car buying without the bad aftertaste. The new Tom Bernard Show is proud to have partners like Bradshaw and Bryant, MyPillow, and North American Banking Company founder, chairman, and president, Mike Bilski. I've advertised on Tom's show for years, and the reason is simple. My business is recognized because of the ads, and that recognition has created growth. What business doesn't want to grow? I highly recommend the Tom Bernard Morning Show for your advertising. Grow results for your business by partnering with the Tom Bernard Show. Visit TomBernardShow.com keyword partner. This is the Tom Bernard Podcast. You horn tootin'. Kristen Burton, what are you smiling about already, sister? I look really tired. I just looked at myself and I was like, whoa. No, you don't. You look fine. Don't worry about a thing. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Kristen Burton Entertainment News brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabankco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So, what are you going to do? Right? What? What am I going to do with all the celebrity controversies happening in the last 24 hours? What I know is... Kevin's eyes just went. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So I'll shut up. I want. So what's going on? Uh, should we start with Diddy or should we start with Sasha oh, Baron Cohen? Who, who do wants, which one do you want to start with? They're both filthy pigs. So what's the difference? That's pretty much what it sounds like. Allegedly, just so we don't get ourselves in trouble. Oh, I think uh, we're okay. <laughs> I don't know. Sasha Baron Cohen right now is very litigious. So let's just <laughs> we'll keep the allegedly in there. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. Um, do, you, do we want to start with Diddy? I feel like this is the, the bigger situation. Yes. Yeah, we can start with Diddy. Yeah, we can start with Diddy. I, I think we talked a little bit about Diddy when the allegations first came up from Cassie Ventura um, in terms of sexual abuse, sex trafficking, emotional abuse. Um, these are stories that honestly have been floating out there for a very long time, but she sued him. And 24 hours later, he settled the case right away. Yeah. But then several yeah. other cases came up and Cassie Ventura's lawyer, who's representing a, a, a Jane Doe victim as well, said, hey, we welcome any type of criminal investigation. And that criminal investigation sure did happen on a federal level. 
And once the feds come to raid your home, not only in Miami, but also in Los Angeles, you've got a massive case and there is something yeah. there if they are raiding your homes. How how did he make so much money? I mean, that house has got, what is that, about a 100,000 square foot house in, in my, Malibu? Yeah, he's got some big homes, big God. property. He's got property in New York City as well, in the mm. city as well as out in the Hamptons. Um, he's been a very one of the most prolific hip hop producers over the last several decades. Probably not as prolific in the last, I would say, five years or so. But I would going back to like the '90s and the early aughts, he was really busy um, and a pioneer in that space. But Obviously, behind the scenes, there were a lot of dark things going on. And I think what's interesting about a lot of the allegations is that currently it's it's women who are suing, but there are also men that seem to be involved in this sex trafficking as victims, or at least there are whispers of it. So it's kind of interesting to see how this will all play out because it's really uncomfortable because you sit there and you think, why was like a 13-year-old Justin Bieber living with him or a 14-year-old Usher living with him? I understand that, you know, he was their mentor at certain points. But again, if we talk about the Michael Jackson case, parents, again, handing their kids over to Michael Jackson. Yep. What is going on? Yeah, let's not be doing things, handing your kids over to anybody, but it, it's just... So this is all about sex trafficking, about sexual abuse. It's about so what is power. That? It's about power. It's at about the end power. Of the day. Right. Yeah, and I think too. I, I just obviously with the feds involved, that means that there is you know it's across state lines. Um, that means that there are multiple people involved, and I, I think this is just the tip of the iceberg. To be honest. You mean just his iceberg or all the icebergs out there? My I, there God. could be interconnected icebergs. I, yeah. I really do feel that people don't operate in a vacuum, you know, that they are right. working with other people. They find like-minded people who have a darkness to them. And it it's not just one person sex trafficking because you have to traffic. If you're taking a, someone, you have to traffic them to somebody else as well. So mm -hmm. that is it's a problem. What is that? Does anybody understand what that is? That in order to, I suppose we all live different lives and I didn't live a life like that, but I just don't understand that whole forcing yourself on somebody or what I, I don't, what is that? I'll, I'll speak as a female. It is a power. It is a power yeah, thing. And I guess. it gets, you know, as a woman, we see it happen to us all the time in many different ways. And it can be in very subtle ways of just cutting us down. It can be in the oh, workplace. Okay. It can be in a social situation. Um, and it's I, we've been raised on these gender roles that men are the dominant sex. So uh, when you're raised like that, and you think that women are less than, and you think that they are there to serve men, if you have a real darkness about you, maybe they think someone like me is there to serve you, not oh, just see. like in the yeah. household, but maybe sexually or, you know, that is a problem. That that idea is a problem. I could understand that. I, I just, I don't know. It, it's a, Well, Diddy's obviously my, not my kind of guy because every time I've ever seen him interview, he's an arrogant prick. But other than that. I also would love to hear from Jennifer Lopez because I, she oh, has really? hinted that that has been not a great relationship. And oh. yeah, he was, I mean, he was cheating on her left and right. And I, I do think, I, I mean, and she, he also got her involved in probably her only major legal situation when they were all in that club one night and that remember the shooting and it was it was a really big deal at the time because jennifer lopez she's not a drinker she's not a big partier mm -hmm. she you, you know even though she lives a very big life she does not live that like drug sex rock and roll type of life right, and right. when she was with diddy there was an edge to her that i don't think she had ever previously seen and she was brought to jail um on that night Ooh. and I, you know she was exonerated of course but i she knows a lot she knows where some of Diddy's skeletons are buried, I think. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Mm -hmm. So do you think, I mean, obviously the fact that they raided at both of his houses in, in Florida and California, he's got some major problems. Did he flee to London, somebody told me? 
there there was a big yesterday like he's you know he's fled this the country and it seems like according to tmz that he is in miami still or he wasn't oh. allowed to leave mm. they have video of him at the airport it looks like he was stopped oh. but his plane is elsewhere so did his plane yes. go and he yeah. stayed but it looks like the, he, they were stopped on the tarmac so they were very well aware and i wonder Eek. if he was tipped off that hey there, someone's coming to your house. Mm -hmm. And then he's like, let me just go to my private jet at the <laughs> private airport and see how, what if I can get away with. Um, but, and, and just to, so everyone knows, it's the feds of New York that did the raid in Miami, at uh, the New oh, York okay. office, I should say, that okay. did the, the raid in Miami and Los Angeles. So obviously in New York, the case is progressing forward. God, I saw the video last night. There were a ton of cops. I mean, a ton of them, man. Yeah, I, both in Miami and in Los Angeles, yeah. helicopters, we're talking about major police presence, shutting down the roads, um, it, allegedly, and it looks like his son, um, I think it was Sean Combs and King, were in handcuffs at a certain point at his Miami property. Um, this is a this is major. I mean, if I were Diddy, I would probably be sweating a little bit this morning. Sure sounds like he should be because they don't, they don't stick what 200 cops on you somebody told me it was like 200 cops total it's a lot it's, a lot it's what cops. should have happened to epstein let's put it that way jeffrey epstein oh, deserves absolutely. this treatment absolutely yeah but he got the treatment yeah i love that oh he killed himself no he didn't no he, i i will i'm not a i'm not a big conspiracy theorist i will no. never believe for a moment that he died by suicide no. because there were too many weird things like all of a sudden you know the I don't, what do you call them? Like the wardens, the, the bailiffs, correction the, officers. The corrections yeah. officers, thank you. There you were go. nowhere to be seen. The cameras were conveniently broken. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. Yep. You're come on. That was right. an inside job of some sort. And someone, I feel like it was an inside job, but somebody was paid to make it happen. Sure looks like it. I, I just, I, yeah, I just happened to be watching the news when that whole thing started. I thought, what the hell did he do for a hundred cops in Miami and a hundred cops in California, Los Angeles? Or, yeah, uh, and that's I why Malibu. I think it's, it's bigger than Diddy. I feel like yeah, this yep. is, whether it's a network, whether it's uh, oftentimes, it, and I always think about this with the Larry Nassar case where yeah, the sex yep. abuse case, he was trading um, child sexual abuse matter back and forth with other people and it's alleged that it was also with jared remember jared the subway yes. guy also oh, got God, caught in that yeah. oh, they yeah. and there was another gymnastics coach that also died by suicide that was involved in they were all sort of swapping material and they all lived in the same area like michigan indiana and, and you're like how do people find each other whether it's the dark web or i mean what do you do like is there a code word it's very strange to me I think the code word is Bert. That's what I've heard. No, the code word is you're disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you mean me or them? That's what them, I Them, mean. not you. Oh, them, not, not me. You, I'm Tom. not just well, going to lie Well, I've never, you know, I've never been arrested in my entire life. Is that unusual? I've never been arrested. Has anyone else? Uh, oh, nobody. Oh, technically, yeah. Though. I was technically, arrested. Technically, you were arrested on what? Uh, Tell me, on, underage Dixon. drinking in college. Oh, okay. oh, that's not fair. They, yeah, that was not was our best dismissed? moment in Florida, North Dakota. Uh, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean. Technically, yes, I was too, but it was for this like drinking, drunk driving like program in high school where we had to like put on a thing. So like, I got booked and everything like oh, that. Yeah. I got thrown in a, in a jail cell and stuff. Like but, a scared straight. Yeah, it, it was called Arrive Alive. It was. Ooh. Oh, Arrive Alive, sure, I remember that. I used to do some of those crazy, like, scare you straight programs. <laughs> they, and, and I know that, like, Mothers Against Drunk Driving used to, like, bring, like, a smashed up car. And then yeah. the mother who yep. lost their kid would be, like, telling this Ugh. horrific tale. And you'd be like, oh, my God. I Super understand. <laughs> now, you had another, you said, should I go with yeah. the Diddy story or what else should I go with? You yeah, Rebel story. Wilson has yeah, a right. and yeah she has a memoir coming out called rebel rising and she's been talking about this a-hole that um in hollywood <laughs> that she did not enjoy working with and she right. didn't name him until the actual a-hole decided to start threatening her with a lawsuit and he also hired a crisis pr firm and this is when you know when you hire crisis pr 
you know, something's coming down the pike. And she said, you know what? Forget it. It, because they're at this level and they're they're threatening me. His name is Sasha Baron Cohen. God. And she put it on her Instagram story. She's, you know, she's actually talked a little bit about this in the past on a podcast. I think going back to 2014, they worked together on the Brothers Grimsby. And oh, okay. again, this is a, it seems to be a power situation um, where he would often, she played his wife or girlfriend, I guess, in the movie. And he'd be like, we want to do this scene. You have to be naked. Come on, Rebel, be naked. And remember, she's at the beginning of her career and he's kind of at the height of his fame. Mm -hmm. And it is super easy when you have no power and it's your big break to go, okay, I should probably do this. And she refused. And she's alleging that he hired a body double to then do the nude scenes without telling her. And then was asking... <laughs> This is great. I can't believe I'm going to say this. But then he asked her at a certain point, he's like, wouldn't it be a funny joke if you put your finger in my butt crack? Uh, hilarious. Let hilarious. Me... Oh, um, and I, I think about this now, and, oh, and I know that there's been a few high-profile actors, Sean Bean comes to mind, who have been pushing against, even Jennifer Aniston, pushed against having intimacy coordinators on mm -hmm. set that choreograph a sex scene or choreograph a kissing scene or choreograph anything that would feel awkward or intimate. Mm -hmm. um, they didn't have int intimacy coordinators at that point. An intimacy coordinator, I can guarantee you, would shove that entire idea of the finger in the butthole um, out the window right away. Be like, no, we're not doing that. So I don't really understand. So he wanted to do this on film? On film. Okay. Now, to... And, and, and to his defense, he is saying that there is evidence, there's video evidence, there's interviews saying that what she's claiming is not true. Um, but if why do you hire a crisis PR firm yeah. if you think yeah. it's not true? I would just say to my publicist, like, here's the evidence. We can present our case. I think we're OK. Do you ever think of getting the hell out of Hollywood? Uh, no. I'm <laughs> no, I love all this stuff. I love, actually. <laughs> I love it. It's great. But it's, it's, it's funny because it's my life is so normal and boring. I mean, mm, I live yeah. surrounded by the chaos and I get to do really cool things, but I don't involve myself with people I shouldn't be around. I, and again, I'm not in situations where I'm like working with Sasha Baron Cohen and where he's lording power over me or anything else like that. Right. But, um, but yeah, I mean, the, and remember this, the, the Brothers Grimsby, Grimsby is a, over a decade old. So I think too, it's it's one of those situations where I think we know better. Hopefully we have a, I think yeah. for women, we feel like we have a stronger voice and say in all of this, there's more union protections in this. And um, I, 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 you know, Rebel Wilson is a complex person on her own too. Some people yeah. love her, some people yeah. don't like her. But yeah. I, I, I kind of believe that this is probably how it happened. It probably went down very similarly to how she's telling it. Because Sasha Baron Cohen, very challenging of a personality. Have you interviewed him, Tom? A uh, long, long, long time ago. He was not funny in the least. He is, yeah, he's difficult. And he's a very difficult he's guy. He's difficult. Um, and I don't know if everyone remembers when he went down the red carpet, I, I believe it was the Borat year, at the Oscars and like threw like a bunch of like what turned out to be, I think, pancake mix, like Bisquick, all oh, over Ryan God. Seacrest while he was oh, interviewing him. God. And you're like, who does that? And I was there that year at the Oscars. And I mean, the carpet was just like this big white cloud of mess. And, you know, listen, you don't have to like the Oscars, but understand a lot of people spent a lot of money and put a lot of effort into this. And for some people, it's their big night and to be honored. And then all of a sudden now Ryan Seacrest is doused in like white flour and they have to go and find him a new tuxedo. Yeah. It's like it's it's weird. It's mm -hmm. really weird to have that behavior as a stunt. All right, a listener wants to close with this, the answer to this question. Okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They want to know if that finger butthole thing is where the term dookie stick came from. I don't have an answer to that. Does anybody know? I no, mean, no. You've, heard, you've heard of dookie stick before, haven't you? A dookie stick? No. I have oh, you've never no. heard of it? Mm -mm. No. AJ, look it up for tomorrow's show. <laughs> AJ, look it up on Urban Dictionary because it's probably there. 
Yep. I'll make sure I do that on a work computer. Yep. <laughs> I know. I was like, actually, I know. As I was saying, it's doing on your own iPhone. Don't yeah. do it on. Make sure you get to the Hubbard office. Oh then... my gosh, HR is going to yeah have a field day. And we were like, "Where's AJ? We got him fired." <laughs> that'd be so great. Hey, Stanley, give me your phone. I want to use it for a second. Yeah, that'd be good over at the Hubbard well, office. That's not that'd be a good idea whatsoever. All right, now a very vile report this morning, Kristen. Thank you so much for that. It was disgusting. <laughs> I just want to say, though, um, you know, I was at this summit yesterday with like Dr. Jill Biden. I'm going to throw her in the name, mm-hmm. Halle Berry and Kerry Washington, blah, blah, blah. Sure. Um, but I would love for us to, they had a really great discussion on social media. I know we've been talking a lot about it. I know you were just talking about it in the last segment, too. But um, I thought about it when I was listening to the summer. I'm like, I wish Tom was here because he would actually love this discussion. See? Yeah. Now, I would guess that since nobody has arrived yet, we're probably not going to do. Is, have you heard from anybody about the the family show? Mm-hmm. I kind of doubt. Well, if Alex would have going to come in, she'd have been here by now. So, how many inches of snow now, uh, Kristen? You need it because you used to live here. You've been through mm-hmm. winters and how many inches of snow you got so far in the last two days? I it's it's at least been like six inches but i think it's we're going to be nearing by the end of the day and, and this is including like yesterday with like rain and stuff too i think it's going to be close to a foot Ooh. Yeah. yeah so it it ain't looking good for the family show i'll tell you that because you they guys come drive home way. safely too it's well that's the great. other thing I, I don't want them staying just you know because the drive home is going to be a real thrill but so you're glad you're living out in la now instead of minneapolis is that uh, what you're saying <laughs> i am earthquakes and all i am <laughs> <laughs> when anybody brings your name up to me now, I'm going to do this. Oh, yeah, her. <laughs> I, bring, I literally bring the most disgusting rip. things. Like, I just feel like I'm like the gross girl on the show. <laughs> on a daily basis. <laughs> what is that? Just call, me, just call me gross girl. Gross. Gross girl Gigi. Tonight. We'll talk to you tomorrow, Gigi. 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 Next. <laughs> Thank you, my so dear. Sorry. We, we will talk to you tomorrow, though. Yes, I'll see you Thank tomorrow. You very much. Kristen Burt, Entertainment News, brought to you by North American Banking Company. Go to nabanco.com to learn more. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. So what I'll do is I'll just kind of hang out, and if they do end up showing up and want to start the show 20 minutes late or something, we could do that too. But you guys, I will talk to you tomorrow. Yeah, talk to you then. Thanks. Have a good day.